Greetings. My name is Todd Chappell from the New York College of Podiatric Medicine. Welcome to this video overview for our original study entitled Morphometry of the Fibular Collateral Ligament. Anatomic study with comprehensive review of the literature that was published in the journal Clinical Anatomy. This study was done in collaboration with scientists from the New York College of Podiatric Medicine, Children's Hospital of Alabama at Birmingham, St. George's University School of Medicine in Grenada, and Neuromed Lab in Staten Island, New York. The aim of our study was to identify the morphology of the fibular collateral ligament of the knee, also called the lateral collateral ligament. There is no consensus in the literature related to morphology, bony attachments, and variations of the fibular collateral ligament. Tears of the fibular collateral ligament are underdiagnosed in practice. Our data are relevant to orthopedic surgeons, physiatrists, family physicians, physical therapists, and any clinician treating knee injuries, which are very common in practice. Knowledge of ligamentous morphology is very important when surgically repairing ruptures of the fibular collateral ligament. We know that chronic injuries lead to knee instability, which underscores the importance of diagnosing ligament injury of the posterior lateral corner of the knee. Surgical repairs of the anterior cruciate ligament and posterior cruciate ligament in the, in the presence of a missed fibular collateral ligament injury lead to the premature and sometimes aggressive development of traumatic osteoarthritis. 70 knees from formal and fixed adult cadavers with a mean age at death of 70 to 70 years were dissected and a digital caliper used to measure fibular collateral ligament length, width, distance from proximal attachment to articular surface, and distance from distal attachment to articular surface. The mean length and width of all fibular collateral ligaments was 48 and 4 millimeters respectively. The mean proximal and distal attachments to articular surface of all fibular collateral ligaments was 22 and 25 millimeters respectively. We found a direct relationship between the proximal and distal attachment distances to articular surface distances. Spear Monroe 0.527 with a p-value of 0.002. And this association was independent of age and sex. Two fibular collateral ligament variations were found. A bifurcate ligament with two distal bands and a trifurcate ligament with three distal bands, all of which attached to the fibular head. Based on our literature search, we found 10 published cadaveric studies on the morphology of the fibular collateral ligament, representing a total of 176 ligaments. This review revealed that only 20% of cadaveric fibular collateral ligament morphology studies reported variations similar to the ones we found in our study. Further, there was variability in the reported location of the fibular collateral ligament proximal attachment. When combining our data with these studies, 48% of fibular collateral ligaments were reported to attach directly to the apex of the lateral epicondyle, approximately 5% to a fovea posterior to the lateral epicondyle, and the remaining 47% posterior and proximal to the lateral epicondyle. A recent study was published on the existence of an anterolateral ligament of the knee, distinct from the fibular collateral ligament. Like the anterolateral ligament, the proximal fibers of our bifurcate and trifurcate variants were blended together, so perhaps the anterolateral ligament is a variant of the fibular collateral ligament. However, unlike our variants, the distal anterolateral ligament consistently attached to the tibia. We found no evidence of the anterolateral ligament in any of our specimens. Clearly, more research needs to be done in this area. Our anatomic study is one of the largest conducted to date and highlights fibular collateral ligament morphology and variations and may provide insight into its age-related changes. Our data may help surgeons and clinicians provide more effective and evidence-based care for patients with knee injuries. We invite you to download and read our paper in the journal Clinical Anatomy and we thank the persons who did, donated their bodies for medical education and research. <laughs>